Welcome to Wineline TV and Wineline Radio. Today we're going to be speaking with David Fuhrer and Pancho Campos regarding the Climate Change Leadership Conference Solutions for the Wine Industry, which is going to happen the 5th through the 7th of March in Porto, Portugal. Good morning. How are you? Good, thank you. And you, uh, David, are you there? I am indeed, Robert. Good to speak with you again. Well, nice to speak with you. Uh, and I don't know who to pose this to, maybe to, to Pancho. Uh, can you give us a brief uh, history of the initiative? Yeah, we started uh, we started talking about climate change and wine back in 2006. That's when we created the first world conference on climate change and wine. Uh, those were early days. Not many people were talking about climate change, let alone in the wine industry. But for the second edition in 2008, I managed to convince Vice President Al Gore. And at the time, he was... He, he was on the crest of the wave because he had just won the Oscar, he has just won the Nobel Peace Prize, and, uh, you know, his movie was everywhere. So we had, a, we had a big successful event in Barcelona. Then three years later, we did another edition, and the keynote speaker, apart from, you know, the leading names of the industry, the keynote speaker was Secretary General Kofi Annan. Now, because of the international economical recession, we had to stop the event for a few years. And it was in 2017 when I met with Adrian Bridge, the CEO for Taylor Sport, who encouraged me to try to organize a similar event in Porto. But we decided that we wanted to change completely the approach, and that's why we added the, the name Solutions to the Wine Industry. So far, most of the conferences were talking about the problem and he was adamant that we had to tackle uh, the solutions that have been uh, uh, put in place in different wine regions around the world. And that's how the whole thing started. And we were, like, we were very lucky to have President Barack Obama in, the, in the, this new edition of the event in July 2006. So that's basically the, the history behind the, the conference. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, and it's great that you're focusing on solutions rather than problems. It's always good to, uh, to add a positive aspect to uh, an initiative like this. Uh, David, uh, can you tell us what's the current reality of the climate of wine? Well, as Pancho had mentioned, the, you know, the, the, what happened in the early 2000s, with Al Gore's movie, bringing to light these uh, these issues uh, to a broader public uh, in the United States and throughout the world uh, as well. Uh, in 2003, I was living in Europe, uh, and uh, 2003 was the, the landmark summer, which uh, broke uh, all living records for heat um, in Europe and other parts of the world, but primarily in Europe. And I was living there, and it, made, it had a great effect upon what resulted with wine from that vintage. Um, that was another part of what had alerted Pancho to what was going on. <clears throat> so in terms, the current reality is quite complex. Um, you know, there's there's some potential positives, uh, but that's not that's not what we're, what we're really bear, trying to bear in mind because wherever there's positives in the change of climate, there's always negatives. It's a broad, large issue. It's not just a question of in Germany having uh, more consistent vintages of uh, ripe Riesling or the fact that you know sparkling wine in England now is uh, enjoying a, resurg a resurgence, not having seen since the. Uh, since the warming periods of the middle of the Middle Ages, um, there's a great number of effects taking place throughout the world, and it's not only in the viticultural aspect; it's also the impact on carbon emissions uh, conducted by supporting industries uh, and in, in, in shipping wine, in, in producing uh, wineries, and packaging issues. So these are complex issues that we are addressing at the Climate Change Leadership Conference next month. You know, it's very interesting to me as I talk to uh, uh, winemakers and uh, wine farmers and winer winery owners, uh, they are beginning to really take a notice. You know, in the past uh, 10, 15, 20 years, 100 years, everybody talked about terroir, terroir, terroir. But now they're talking about 
how the climate is affecting the terroir. And, you know, wise uh, winemakers are adapting their techniques in order to try to overcome some of uh, these issues. Well, from my studies, as I recall, the concept, the broad concept of terroir had, had always included climate. It wasn't exited to it. Uh, it's an essential part of it. And uh, people were paying, people were looking upon terroir as just the soil. It's far more than that. And climate is essentially um, equal, not uh, superior to soil in what happens with wine at the, um, in the beginning, middle, and end. From my point of view, you know, the, the reason why terroir is changing is because Climate change affects things like ultraviolet radiation, climate, humidity, rainfall. And if you change those patterns, you are actually changing the life and the biodiversity of the soil and also of the microclimate. So climate is, is a very essential part of terroir. And uh, the, the changes in climate will not affect only the climate itself, but the life that is within the terroir within the soil, all the microorganisms that inhabit the soil of a terroir, which are, you know, it's, it's part of the concept of terroir and the character of, of a wine, are starting to be affected by the changes in the climate. I see. And, you know, if I'm thinking like a winery owner, I am thinking about the commercial aspects of the winery and what is the commercial impact in the change of climate on the industry? Well, you know, that is the, probably that is the, the biggest and strongest selling point when you try to convince people that climate change is an issue to consider. Now, if you look at, for example, Spain, Spain has had in the last 10 years the four or five uh, years with the strongest drought. The moment you have drought, you have less yields on the vineyard, less yields is equivalent to less wine being produced. That in itself carries a tremendous economical impact for the people producing the, the, the grapes, but also for the winemakers selling the wine. That's just to give you an example of how climate change has already started impacting the vineyard. Climate change also affects Things like acidity, levels of alcohol, phenolic maturation, which forces the winemaker to make more adjustments. The more intervention is equivalent to higher costs within the winery. And also, if you have to change the canopy management, you have to change your viticultural practices, that will have immediately an economic impact. The technologies and uh, regulations are they changing too to uh, to help mitigate this uh, impact? Well, adjacent to what Pancho had mentioned, it's also the issue of uh, impact of labor. Not all labor at wineries is uh, year-round full time, and it's quite common for wine ma winery managers or vineyard managers to uh, arrange for workers to be available at certain periods of time. And if climate change, and it has had this effect uh, in many places in many different ways, shifts the seasons. It's not a question of it being hotter within the normal season it's, you know, or colder or rainier. Sometimes the beginning of, so let's say, the rainy season will be two weeks earlier or two weeks later based upon the impact of climate change to a particular region. And that impacts when it is these work crews uh, are scheduled to show up at a particular place in time. And that's a very complex, difficult issue for winery management to consider. Well, wow, that, uh, that certainly would be a major uh, economic consideration for the winery. What um, topics are going to be covered at the uh, Porto Protocol? Well, uh, I, can, I can take you through the topics, but before I would like to explain that there's a slight difference in what the conference is all about from the Porto Protocol. Oh, ah, okay. The Porto, the Porto Protocol is an initiative that was created as a result of the Climate Change Conference. It was launched by President Barack Obama. He made the presentation of the, pro, of the protocol, the initiative. And we have been working in this idea for the last uh, for the last year. 
And uh, the Porto Protocol is a non-profit initiative. It's uh, being set up as a foundation, and it's free of charge, and it has two very uh, simple goals. One, if you adhere to the Porto Protocol, we ask you to commit to do a little bit more of what you have been doing so far. And second is that you make a commitment to share any you know, case studies, any research, any success, success story that you think that the people that are also members of the Porto Protocol can learn and, and, and take it as an inspiration to solve similar problems in their own in their own uh, wine regions. That is, that in essence, the, the Porto Protocol. I see, and that's a worldwide initiative, I would suspect. That is a worldwide initiative, but also it's an initiative that is, uh, we have already signed up more than 150 companies, and interestingly, a lot of those companies not only are directly related to the wine industry, we have uh, companies like, for example, Toyota or Price Waterhouse, that they have realized that this could be a benchmark. And uh, the wine industry through the Porto Protocol can show its leadership that can be applied in other industries. And this is the uh, this initiative is being directly supported by the conference itself. Basically, the conference, the ongoing work from the conference will, uh, will express itself through the Porto Protocol. Exactly. Interesting. Now, if you want, if you want me to describe the most important topics that are going to be covered at the conference, I can take you through very quickly through the program. I think that would, I think that would be very interesting. Thank you. Yeah, the program will start on the afternoon of March the fifth, and it's when we open the trade show area. We do the welcome ceremony for all the speakers. And all day on March the 6th is dedicated to solutions to the wine industry. And we have, uh, we start, for example, with a session that we call New Responses to Climate Change. And we have asked Miguel Torres, Cristina Mariani May from Banfi, and Margaret Enriquez from uh, uh, LVMH to explain what they have been doing in their wineries, in their different projects. And the moderator is uh, nobody else than Professor Greg Jones, probably the guy that uh, is the point of reference in the study of climate change in the wine industry. We will continue with a session that we call Home and Around the World, describing what the Iberian Peninsula has been doing to cope with uh, and mitigate climate change, but also around the world, with three very interesting speakers, uh, Antonio Grassa from Portugal, Kim Nicolas, and the moderator there is uh, Greg Jones as well. And also we have a representative for Contact Oro in Chile, Gerard Casabon. After a little break, we go into the consumer expectations and sensible marketing. Uh, you know, that session should emphasize the importance of learning from and communicating with consumers. The next session is Winery of the Future, with Professor Roger Bulton, who has recently retired from UC Davis, moderated by Jamie Good, and uh, Professor Bulton will explain uh, the winery that they design as a winery of the future at UC Davis. Then in the afternoon, we will continue with uh, vineyard development with a couple of experts from uh, uh, Francisco Lopez from Spain, uh, Gilles Decote from uh, Wallace. Yep. Yeah, and Jose Buyamus, you know, the, 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 the world-famous grape expert. Then we have a, a session that we call a report from AdviClean with Carlos Miranda, Chris Foss, Joel Rochard, again moderated by Jose Buyamus. And the Live AdviClean project develops climate change adaptation and mitigation strategies, and uh, it demonstrates their applications at the vineyard scale. Uh, and then that day we have two more sessions. One is on water management, water management where we have Carlos Jose. He was awarded uh, the, the, the unofficial title of Mr. Water. <laughs> Apparently, he, he is the most, he is the, the, the biggest expert on, on hydric resources and water management, especially in agriculture. And then a gentleman that we have invited from South Africa. You know, I'm sure you are aware that you know Cape Town uh, was very close to reaching day zero, and this gentleman used to work for the governor of Cape Town as a water and drought expert. So we think that he has a lot to contribute. And we finished that day with a session about energy with uh, 
job of Ramona. Uh, he's a cabo producer in Spain, and he'll he'll tell the people how he's using geothermal energy, and the moderator there is Cyril Penn. Now the next and uh, jo jo joining him is, joining him if I might ask Katie Jackson of Jackson Family Winery. Oh really? I have a uh, meeting with her uh, next week on the twenty first. Yeah, the Jackson, the, Jackson, the Jackson family have been uh, leaders in California in addressing uh, all sorts of issues regarding sustainability. In this session, she'll be uh, with uh, Senior Gramona talking about the energy issues. Uh, Cyril Penn of Wine Business Monthly, previous to his uh, taking over the leadership of that important trade monthly uh, out of California, he was actually very much involved in business and energy issues as a, as a, uh, a middle-of-the-road journalist, shall we say. Oh, okay. Yes, March, that's right. that's March right. the 7th. Uh, the morning is dedicated to solutions to the wine industry, and uh, we start with sustainability, biodiversity, and soil management. And there we have, you know, the Gerard Bertrand from the winery that has his name in the Languedoc, Olga Barbosa from the uh, Universidad Austral in south of Chile. And Henry Schlomps, which is uh, another water expert from water and vineyard expert from South Africa. And uh, David, if you remind me, who will be the moderator there? We just required uh, Joao Barossa, who's in charge of the sustainability issues uh, for Vinos do Alentejo in Portugal. Uh, very learned guy, but specifically in these issues, and he's uh, had a lot of international background too. So he'll be moderating these three other uh, steam panelists. Uh -huh. Then the next session is it's about packaging and transportation. Perhaps you know two of the issues that are more uh, carbon consuming. And then we have Tiago Moreira, Kim Kim Carstensen, Vicente Sanchez from Spain, and the moderator is uh, the British journalist uh, Richard Sill. And the last session of the climate change, uh, the, the one the solutions for the wine industry, it's efficiency and economics. Uh, there we're going to talk about about money, actually, the question that you prompted before. And we have two experts, Stephen Vanakia from uh, Rabobank and Malcolm Preston. And the moderator will be Mike Besef from the uh, Journal of uh, Wine Economy. And in the afternoon is when we have the big shots. We have four, four speakers. We start with Afrosha as an example of that, that the effort of one man counts. This is a gentleman that started cleaning the beaches of Mumbai, and that video went viral, and now he goes around the world cleaning different parts of the planet from plastics. And... He, he has even turned you know, places that were a complete dumpster into, uh, you know, regeneration of species. Then we have, that is at, at the individual level. Then we have, at the company level, you know, uh, Kai Toro. He is the CEO for uh, um, a burger chain that not only wants to be carbon neutral, but they want to be carbon positive as a way of compensating for the pollution that, you know, selling burgers can represent. Then we move into the ONG approach, and there we have the WWF. We have uh, the Director General for the WWF. And to close the event, we have Vice President Al Gore. Well, that's a pretty heady uh, lineup, if I must say so. Uh, if someone wants to know more about the uh, uh, conference, where can they find the information? Well, quite, quite readily, the website climatechange-porto.com will provide them the full information about the conference uh, and its speakers and what the initiative is, what the conference is trying to accomplish, both in the short and long term. Uh, it's packed with details uh, for anybody interested in the conference in particular. The Porto Protocol Initiative uh, is at portoprotocol.com, uh, and it's all laid out there. What the, all the details of that uh, are to be covered and within and what the ongoing work uh, stemming from the conference uh, will be. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we're again engaged in social media communications uh, and uh, watch your 
TV stations, uh, websites of uh, your favorite uh, wine magazines. We have sponsorships and media partners uh, from around the world. And uh, so keep, keep abreast through all those uh, communication streams. Yes, and let me ask that, uh, should uh, a wine industry uh, executive uh, uh, get excited about this and want to jump in with two feet? Are there any uh, sponsorships uh, still available? Yes, absolutely. We, we do have uh, a trade show area uh, with two types of stands. You know, one is the simple table for wineries that want to show their wines. And then we have a small stand where people can show not only the wines that they're producing, but also it's for companies that have uh, undirect relation to the wine industry or, or no relation at all to the wine industry. And that they want to show what are they doing in regards to protecting the environment. And um, there are other opportunities, of course, are still available. For example, if somebody wanted to sponsor the official lunch or the welcome cocktail, that's still up for, for sponsorship. Not, not many opportunities available, but we, we still have a few of them. Thank you, Robert. I'd be remiss in, uh, in, uh, not, in not mentioning that uh, it was our great pleasure uh, for President Barack Obama to have launched last July, uh, the Porto Protocol, and um, our keynote speaker, and the man who will be relaunching the Porto Protocol at the conference, uh, will be uh, Nobel Laureate and uh, former Vice President Al Gore. Well, let me say that uh, from an outside observer, not only is this an incredibly important and critical uh, topic of conversation that must happen, you also have just an astounding array of uh, top uh, speakers that will make this uh, event really worthwhile to uh, anybody that uh, wants to attend or sponsor. So uh, looking forward to uh, hearing more about it, and I wish you uh, both great success in this endeavor. And uh, hey, Climate uh, change leadership and solutions for the wine industry are something we all need to be involved in. Thank you, thank David. You. Thank you, Robert. And Pancho, thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you so much for your help. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you.